Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my job shop. Welcome to my channel. My name is Keith and I'm your host. Today, I'm getting ready to mount the bed back to the pedestals on Pearl. And I've cleaned up the bolts and everything's all set. And we're going to be putting these in for the second time since 1941. All right, the lathe was built in about the sixth month of 1941. So uh, I don't know if that was actually before the, you know, the day of or not, but the year is a good remembrance of what happened. Okay, before I get lifting this up and putting this together, let's take a look at uh, some of the paint work that Lisa and I did in the last four days, five days to get this ready to be up to this point. You're going to get a chance to look underneath uh, the bed of the lathe from the underside, which the last time that that probably was vis visioned like this was the, the pre-assembly part. And when the painters probably, I don't know if they painted it, spray painted it or how they painted it, but I'm sure that they got to see in all directions around and of the bed itself. Let's take a look. Okay, so the last couple days, Lisa and I have been painting the uh, two coats of gray needed to be put on some of the items here for assembly. And of course, we all been waiting for the bed to be painted so we can attach it to the uh, pedestals and the pan, put that assembly all together. And uh, just thought I'd give a look at the underside of the bed itself, which you don't get to see all the time. And you probably don't get to see a 1941 Monarch CK-12 this clean unless you were in 1941 and in <clears throat> 2023 at the same time. I just peeled all the tape off and then I took a razor blade and just made sure that there was no raised paint surfaces on any of the metal contact areas so that there was no false pressures being put anywhere. Those are all flat and ready to go. You can bolt together stains, but you can't bolt together chunks of paint or anything else in between there. Um, I was pretty happy too with uh, the way the casting on her came out really nice. I don't think I'm going to paint it or highlight it. I love it to be the stamp because you try to do much more than that and you take away from it. The rack gear is nice and clean, and also the mounting surfaces for the uh, quick select or change gear box for the feeds. Our other accessories here on the tabletop have been touched up as well, trying to keep things going. Uh, we got two coats on the engine plate now. We're going to be working on bolting up the um, adapter for the new motor. And the top cover for the taper attachment is really looking sweet. It looks sweet just being straightened out. It was all kinds of bent up. In fact, it wouldn't even go on without two hands. And now you can slip the thing on with one hand. Um, also, we took one of the bearings there, got the bearing number. And we have eight, uh, 16 brand new bearings coming to put this thing back together. So, and they average 20 something dollars a piece. Adds up quick. But so does anything else in this economy we got going on right now. <clears throat> the carriage, it's got two coats of paint on it. And I'm almost thinking uh, three will smooth it out even a little bit more. Might as well while we're here. It's not a race to put this on yet. And that's the back plate. And of course now the back plate and the dome. I had to do a braze repair on the dome itself. Not 
not this piece here. That was, that was perfectly fine. One of these ears was broken up because it was either dropped or something along the way. Um, but now it's 100%. And uh, it could probably use a third coat on it too as well. It blends in some of those uh, sanding scratches. I, uh, I'm not... <laughs> I don't feather out my sanding too much as long as it's smooth and the chunks are gone and the divots are filled um, let's face it I'm gonna be putting some chips and some oil on this thing all right I'm gonna get that flipped over I turned off the radio on this nice Sunday and I uh, decided to give you a little bit of clip here so that I could add it in in the video all right, we're at a point where we're watching paint dry again. <laughs> this is all wet. This is, uh, Lisa and I just touched up all these items right now. So, some of the trim pieces that go on the lathe and the vent covers that go on the pedestals. Here's the carriage. And uh, this is uh, the third coat on it. I'll take a look at it after this dries. And we got two coats of paint from the underside and we rolled it over and this is the first coat on today. And all the center areas really show the benefit of taking filler and bondoing in all those surfaces so that you can wipe down and clean those areas of your lathe when they do get messed up. And go over here to the other side. Um, I did pull all the tape off, but I put a new piece on because I wanted to hit that area right above the gear rack again. And the natural monarch into the casting really really looks good still and uh like i said we're almost ready to assemble the bed to the pedestals i may have a good balance point here or i may need to move my strap a little bit one way or the other but okay It is almost equal, exactly right on that web. Okay, before we get too far up, because I want to be able to hold this thing as I raise it up, I'm going to take a razor blade and just kind of make sure that I don't have any drips or overhangs on any part of this here that doesn't feel like it because we did a a coat or two after i flipped this over before i flipped it over i did i did this before you can have stains of paint this has got paint on it. We're not worried about that. That's a uniform coating of that. Otherwise, um, we would have just left this completely bare. And all right.
I was almost you know, having a couple pieces of uh, three quarter inch all thread uh, sticking down through here so that I could I could um, get the feel of it. But I think I'm level enough now. I'm going to bring it down close enough and then I'm going to be able to stick the bolt up through there. And I'm actually going to grab it before it actually gets down to the surface so it'll guide down to it. So now I will go ahead and bring it down close to it. Okay, I should be able to reach up that point there with my bolts. All right, we got four for the front, four for the rear. Okay, we are going to have to be down a little bit closer there. We're closer to the front here. Let's see what we got. Once I find one here, I know. Let's bring her down. We'll try to get one in the back here. Okay, I got that one. I'm gonna go get a ratchet. I'm going to get the impact and bring those all down tight and the reason why I don't just impact them in is I don't want to get to this far and then gall cross thread or something one of those four bolts in there or in the four bolts holding the pedestal on the headstock in all right
That's <laughs> what we've been waiting for. Uh, look at the floor space I got now. <laughs> uh, and of course, I'll be doing some more painting, but I want to touch up on everything that's been painted. But as you go on, you want to seal up some areas with paint uh, that join things together where you're really not painting all the areas until you have the fit because you don't want to put unequal layers or runs uh, that get hard in between your mating surfaces. All right, impact. Okay, now we're gonna be leveling out the lathe and you can, I can feel the ones that are a little bit loose right now we'll just take them we'll bring some pressure on them and then we can put some levels up on the bed and take a look at where we're at and a couple of these this floor is pretty whack too so all right awesome <laughs> Okay, I'm getting ready to level out Pearl. And I've got some basics that I like to use in leveling out a machine. Very similar to how I would set up and do an engine alignment in a boat or something like that. Meaning, I like to get out my calculator and my pad of paper and everything because I want to limit... The amount of times I got to go over there, the amount of times I got to go over there, and the amount of times I have to look up here. I don't go for the guessing game, uh, let's try this, let's try that. Because it is just a math problem. Alignments are a math problem, leveling's a math problem, and it makes it very simple, and you don't have to work so hard at it. All right? Let me bring you in just a little bit closer and I'm going to also set up my GoPro up here when it's time looking down on the bubble so that you see me make my adjustments. You can keep an eye on the bubble and I won't look at it until the very end. How's that? Okay, this gives you a good visual of the base here. And it gives the GoPro a good visual of the level. And the bubble is almost off to this side right here. All right. And we know that if you lift it on that side there, the bubble's there. So we know that we're high on the tail stocked in and we're low on there. That's, a, that's our given, okay? So we know that we can act on there. How do I put this as a math problem? It's a ratio of the length of the level which is 12 and the length between that foot stud there or that foot and this foot here 66 and a half so you take the base of 65 and a half and the level at 12 and you divide 12 into the length there we're gonna we're gonna loosen up the center ones and we're just gonna move those out of the way because we don't want that to disrupt the speed of bringing it to level we'll bring those back in and I'll show you afterwards how to set the feet pressure and have equal support for your entire lathe but first let's get it level all right so 
what we did is we took a series of feeler gauges and we kept switching them in and out until we put them underneath here and brought that to level. We took those, make sure we're at zero, and we checked them out and they're 54,006. Uh, so we took the 54 and And we multiplied that by our ratio for dwell, uh, bringing that. The ratio between the level and the base was 5.542. Uh, so we're going to multiply that times 5.542. And it equals uh, 299 thousandths. All right, and this was uh, okay. So I just I'm jotting it down on the paper here. So I'm going to flash you a picture of that um, in a second, just so you can see my formula out here. Okay, so that is uh, two hundred two hundred ninety nine thousand. It's just slightly under three uh, five sixteens here, but I just want to go ahead and. Is this is what I got to do because I just I'm not used to this system here but let's just say no oh, that's close enough two 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 ninety okay it's about seven and a half millimeters <laughs> I like the reminder that uh, one of my viewers gave me the other day if, if Jesus wanted the metric system he would add 10 disciples instead of 12. Um, it struck my funny bone I loved it so I had to carry it on. Um, okay just joking aside I mean I'm glad that anybody that's using the measurement that they use to make the part as accurate as they are boo -wah. all right great it's uh, fantastic you use what you have. We all have the same skills a turning shaping facing milling machining all those phases so it's just um, it's just the system that you're using and I use my own system um, okay so basically you got almost 300 thousands to move now let's just say you didn't have any measurement any scales or anything else you could take the thread pitch which is 18 18 threads um, that's one turn is 55 thousands so if you actually took your 299 and divided that by your old 55, um, that would be 5.4 turns, okay? Almost five and a half turns. Now, I've taken a piece of 5 16 key stock. There's plenty of gap on there because the floor slopes like this and I already have slight tension there, equaling slight tension here only by the turn of the wrench. Um, so I know that this is the this is the tight side, okay? Now I don't really want a foot going all the way down on there, so I'm gonna compensate a little bit here and a little bit at the back. I'm gonna do most of it here because there's not much on the jack screw on the back side there. So the travel is kind of limited there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, um, two-thirds of it on here and there first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these four pads here in the middle and then we'll come back to making our adjustment and watching the bubble we've removed those four pads in the center and we did do a little machining on the uh, unthreaded part of those rear jacking bolts but we maintained exactly where it's at and the bubble still shows the same location right now with the um, the GoPro. We have 5.4 turns to make a combination. So I think we're going to go ahead 
and we're going to take three turns down on the front or two turns down on the front and then we'll go ahead and we'll take the remainder uh, 3.4 turns up on the rear okay so I'm gonna come to the front here first where's my knee pad here okay and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm putting a uh, a blue mark towards me on the front so that I can adjust each each uh, uh, screw down here and uh, all right, so I'm going to go down two. I'm going to go ahead one, two full turns on that one. That one had lighter pressure than this one. I'm letting this drop the whole load right here. There's one. Okay, there's two full turns on each one. Let me see if I got pre pressure on the. Yeah, I got. I got this about the same amount of pressure that was underneath there. So I feel that I'm. E I'm not exactly equal on the pressure, but I'm in the position of uh, rotation on the bolts in the same equal manner. All right. So now I put two dots here facing aft, and we're gonna crank this up three and uh, 3.4 turns there's one we do one on the other one too i'm gonna that one's hard to get to so i'm gonna just go ahead and go there's one there's two There's three, and then point four, about there. One. Two. Three. I'm starting to feel pressure here. Okay. Okay. Let's give it the point four here. That looks close to point four right there. I'm gonna say that I'm pretty. I should be pretty well in the middle of that bubble somewhere. <laughs> okay. It came just a little bit past, but that's how math will bring you right up to par now i bet you if i equal out the side pressures here um side to side probably bringing down just a little bit of this pressure right here on this one here let's feel that All right, I got a good feel on the front and the back. We'll get the next step will be to take a torque wrench and feel the torque pressure of those bolts equal on either side. I'm not going to compare the front to the back because obviously the headstock of a lathe is heavier than the tailstock of a lathe. But side to side on all four of those should be pretty close to the same amount of torque. And the same thing for the base back here. That way you know that you're kind of supporting between all the feet. And you have to adjust it that manner because the floor is not level by any means. So the lathe now, well, we did maintain side to side pretty good. It does need to come up just slightly on the front of the lathe, but it's really, really, really close. But I wanted to share at least how I look at an alignment. So I'm not working real hard to be jacking around back and forth 
and looking. I was able to do that in as close as one line, less than one line off on the level with one planned adjustment. And that's what it's all about. Hey, this might be a tease. <laughs> a tease for me or a tease for you. <laughs> um, yes, electricians have just pushed three-phase wires through my three-phase supply and left enough pigtail here to feed the boxes and uh, told me to stand by. <laughs> so I'm telling you to stand by for less noise. Actually, it's kind of in, in the time too because uh, my uh, phase converter here given just a little bit of a noise after it runs for a couple hours or an hour or whatever it just it warms up a little bit and then that noise kind of goes away and it sounds like it normally did or that first did when um, I installed it so I don't know it's almost almost like you put the playing card in the spokes of your bike <laughs> uh, anyway awesome things are happening